So, I am Lewis. And I'll be Jeff. <laughs> and this is Jeff's bright blue Volvo. We will have to do a feature on it someday. <laughs> and today, we are both fitting a, or he's helping me, or advising me how to fit a front drive shaft, and we're gonna do a gearbox flush, um, an oil change. So if I can do it, you can do it, and that's that. Let's get going. Cars <laughs> are lifted, we're gonna jump underneath and remove what we need to remove. So we have pre-treated all the undercarriage nuts and on here they are a 12 mil. But according to Jeff, on the newer variants, they are a tor um a T piece nut for these. So just be aware it might not be a 12 on your vehicle, but they are here, 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 here. And they will come off like that. So here's your locations. One, two, three, uh, four. And five. And then under here we have a fairly somewhat dryish engine. It's not perfect, but it ain't bad. And what we have then removed for the drive shaft is up in where are you hiding to? Up in here, we've taken off the 12mm bolts here for the clamp for the drive shaft. And then we have removed the 23mm. Oh, yeah, da, 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 da. there you go, there you go. It's like for the oil box, which is looking a little bit wet now. And I've also realised at the same time this needs doing as well, so that's another thing I've got to do among all the rest. But yeah, so there we are 23 mil, and then 12 for there, along with all of your nuts for the undercarriage. So, um, the oil is literally black more black than red which is not good we'll show that when we drag it out in a minute um, but we have drained it or what's left of it it actually looks quite low in all fairness but we have drained what's left so we're going to be putting the original plug back on temporarily for the flush and then obviously we'll have a new plug to put on when we're finished with it so we're going to empty this out we're going to empty it then do the drive shaft or we're we going to refill it and then do the drive shaft we'll do the drive shaft next we're going to do the drive shaft next refill it flush and then we're going to empty again and then it should be back to a beautifully smooth working gearbox. So that is the oil and it is black as anything. Um, I put a little photo in there now. Oh, he's going to, no, he's going to show you again. He's going to do one in the pink, <laughs> one in the pink, <laughs> one in the stink. <laughs> yeah, so that's how it's meant to be. And that's how it's not meant to be so yeah i'm glad we're doing it there's a lot of sludge and build up in there you can see along the side of the rim there there's all sludge build up as well so it's quite well over geo i'd say probably about 60 70 000 miles at least so that is the uh, drive shaft bracket as you can see the bolts are pretty dusty and dirty um and just done his best already to clean up the inside of this this is full of rust and debris so the same was on the drive shaft face as well so just be aware you want to get this out on especially on high miles and give it a good clean up and try and treat it if you can before you put it back on we have loosened obviously take the wheel off but we've um, loosened the drive shaft nut which is a 13 or 14 mil depending on which one you have on there and um, we're not taking it all the way off we're just loosening it enough so we've got a nice little gap in there um before removing the drive shaft in a bit we have taken out the outer tie roll end that was an 18 mil and there's this lovely uh, socket in the top here i lodged an 8 mil around it and then ratcheted off the nut with the spanner which was great so that's now free and on to the next stage of dry shaft removal so a lot of craziness has just happened so the two shock bolts we have had to remove to allow more access uh, on the bolted side, the bolt side is a 18, and then on the outside, on the nut side, that's a 21. So we zip both of them out, and that's pulled the hub away from the shock. Also, I've used a 19mm on the top of the drop link to loosen that as well, because it was getting in the way of where the dry shaft goes. And then, all we've quite simply done is push the dry shaft out, and then pulled towards us, sort of in and through the gap here. And then we have a dry shaft, and you can see what I see me. Trying to hold it still, but the CV joint here is. Back, you can't really see it, but there's loads of play in that CV joint 
there. So we have a new drive shaft to go on. So we're back together. So I want to feed the end of the drive shaft in through here, in between the gap between the drop link and the shock. Push it all the way in and you'll feel it click. The way to know it lines up is if you go underneath, you'll see the collar will line up with the collar bracket, which is fetching the top of the collar, um, which we have cleaned up and we'll be putting back on there to bolt the dry shaft into position. And then we redid it back up. So we got the dry shaft in and hand tightened it. This is a 14 mil. The new nut is a 14 mil. And then we pulled this, pushed this back up into position and got the shock in place with the two bolts. So the shock's back in and the dry shaft's loose. We then got the tie rod end in. And then we then got to the drop link, which we lifted the shock up to do to put back together and we did the dry shaft last. And that is the full dry shaft installation done. Apart from the bottom bracket that we're gonna put on to finish off. And then we are going to fill with oil drive it back up and we're going to go for cycle for the gears and do the flush and the refill. So this is the process for your flush. So I start it up, Jeff's going to run me through it. Hey, you Matt. Find the brake. Yep. Engage reverse. Engage neutral. Engage reverse. Reverse neutral run, down to neutral, down to drive. That's in. Yep. Take the manual. Yep. And go up and up to three and back down to one. Uh, nice and steady about five times. So you engage in as many gears as you can while you're not driving. Yeah. done this twice in this instance because we think the oil hasn't been done for about 70 ish thousand miles or so looking at it so it's we've still done black on the first drain so we'll wait till uh, it gets red yeah so yeah we had black on the first drain um, and this will now be the second and then hopefully we can fill up with fresh here we are then guys so this is the second drain so it's quite wet under here well, this is the this is a not so professional way of doing it. It goes everywhere. I'm not quick enough, unfortunately. Okay. So it's still coming out black now on the second run through. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'd say it's it's redder, still quite dark. Yeah, fucking, I still, yeah, it's pretty dark, mate. To be fair. Yeah, it's, it's dragging all the crap. Yeah. It's, it's thinner though, isn't it? Yeah. Consistency's a lot thinner. Yeah, still very dark. Dragging all the crap out there. Do I do another or do I leave it like that? It's up to you. Well, I mean, it's looking like yeah. huh? Yeah. yeah, you reckon? Yeah. How much oil have we got left? I hope we barely even touch the surface to be fair. We've got um I'd say three quarters of that jug left. Do I do one more? Yeah. I'll let you enjoy that a bit more in a minute.
Should come out looking more red now, shouldn't it? Is it? It should be more red. It's <laughs> It's green. It's still pretty dark. It's just dragging the dregs of it out, the shit off the sides and everything. So Jeff the man is working the magic on on Vida and your tender gearbox that it now has uh, no oil, is that what you're telling me? I'm just resetting the count there. Yeah. So uh shouldn't have any lag in the box, it does things for you. It, it basically lets the computer start from scratch. Nice. Just let it read the read the car. Even though I got the profile on you, I just couldn't be bothered. Right, transmission. That one, steering. Right hand drive. There we are. Okay. That, that should be the gearbox bird done.